Now in the yesterday's class we saw the skeletal system of our human body and the different types of bones inside our body. Isn't it? Now there we saw about the vertebral column. What did I tell about the vertebral column? It is a long bone which starts from the back of our neck up till the tip. Isn't it? Where the tip of the tail ends. For animals it uh, becomes longer and it converts into a tail. Okay. So that is called as a vertebral column. Now what care should be taken for the vertebral column? In our health education we have already learned that our posture should be correct. Isn't it? Otherwise what will happen? That will affect our vertebral column and we can have deformities. Not only that, if anything happens to the vertebral column, a person can be paralyzed and be in bed for years together or till death. There are certain people who have met with accidents and if any uh, rupture happens to the vertebral column, that person will not be able to walk anymore. So we have to be very careful with our vertebral column. So look at this, this picture given in your textbook, the positions, how you should sit in your classroom, how you should stand. We know the different posted, postures, isn't it? So when you are sitting to study in your classroom or at home, we have to sit erect with keeping the vertebral column, our backbone straight. It is called as a vertebral column or we call as the backbone. So always when we are walking, when we are standing, when we are sitting, we have to see that we call keep our vertebral column or the backbone straight. We should not stoop like this or go to one side. This will affect, this posture might affect your vertebral column and you will get postural deformities and care should be taken for the vertebral column. Now, how many bones do we have in our body? Look at this box which is given in your textbook. There are around 300 bones in our body at the time of birth. That is when we are born. In our body we have about 300 bones. By the time we grow up and go into adulthood, what happens? Certain bones in our body fuse together and the number of bones in our body reduces to 206. So at the birth we have 300 bones and then as you grow some of the bones join together. Fuse means joining together and it becomes 206 bones when we are an adult person. So now look at this table. The number of bones in our human body. How many bones are there? In the skull. We have seen the skull yesterday isn't it? In the skull the skull is joined together with 22 bones. The ribs in our body. We have ribs that round, isn't it? So if you touch like this, you can feel the ribs. There are 24 ribs. That is on one side we have 12 and the other side we have 12. So in the, uh, the ribs, there are 24 ribs. Then in each leg, there are 30 bones. That is from the thigh. Thigh one, one bone is there. Down two are there. Including your toes and fingers, uh, there are 30 bones in the leg. Then waist, hip. There are two bones. Hip bone. Hip bone means this area. This area. This is called as a hip. So in your hip you have two bones. Then vertebral column. Look at this vertebral column. In the vertebral column from the neck up till down. There are 33 bones attached one on one to another. Okay. There are 32 bones in the vertebral column. Each hand you have 32 bones. That is from here up till here. We have 32 bones and the chest bone that is the back side here. We have a chest one chest bone. So if you total it up you will get 206. Now we have seen bone somewhere else also isn't it? That is the pinna of a ear. What is the pinna? This thing of the ear is called the pinna. Okay. The pinna of the ear and the nose. If you can shake your nose like this isn't it? Turn your nose and see here. Inside the nose here, you can see the bone is shaking, isn't it? Why is it this here also you can twist and turn like this. Why is it? These two bones are very soft bones. They are 
soft bones in the nose and in the ear. They are called as cartilage. Yesterday I told you when I was telling, isn't it? They are called as cartilage. So in children, the number of cartilages is more. When they grow up, as they grow, the cartilages fuse together. This becomes strong, I told you. And they will turn. Okay, so cartilages are very small, soft bones seen in the nose and the ear. Okay, so this much I hope it is very clear for you. Now, we saw the number of bones in our body, isn't it? Now, you act as if you are eating the fo food like your hand is tied to a stick. If a stick is tied to your hand like this, how will you eat your food? Hmm? How can you eat your food? Can you try and see? The hand is straight like this, isn't it? Can you bring the food to your mouth like this? You cannot bring, isn't it? Huh? If a stick is tied here, why can't you bring the food? Because you will not be able to fold your hand, isn't it? Can you brush your teeth if your hand is stiff, straight? Can you brush your teeth? No, isn't it? So why can't we do these activities? Because we will not be able to fold our hands and fingers, isn't it? If a stick is tried from here up till here, we will not be able to fold our hand, isn't it? Now, so are we able to eat and drink and brush our teeth? Yes. Are we able to walk, able to run? Yes. Why are we able to do those things? Yes, because we know we can fold our fingers like this. Isn't it? We can shake our fingers. We can move it right around like this. That is why we are able to do lot of activities. What are the arrangements that is in your hand that is able, to, uh, that is making you able to do these activities? Are there certain things inside your hand in the bones that is helping you to do these activities? Yes, isn't it? That is now move your palms and elbows. You can move it like this, isn't it? Whichever way can you move? You can turn it like this. You can move it like this. You can fold your fingers like this. Isn't it? You can do like this. These are the different ways you can do. Then you can turn your neck like this. Like this you can turn. Then your knee you can fold. Your fingers, your legs, your toes. You cannot see my legs and toes. So try to do all these activities. We are able to do it, isn't it? Why are we able to do these things? Because there is some arrangement inside the bones that is helping us to fold and move our bones. We know there are 206 bones. So all these bones are moving. That is why we are able to do different activities. Now look at this table which is given in your textbook. The body parts. Yes, palm. How can we do? We can move it up and down. Now second one is the elbow given there. How can you move your elbow? Yes, we can move it this way. Isn't it? We can move the elbow this way. Knee. Which is your knee? This knee. How can we move? We, we can move it. Front and back. Neck. How can you move your neck? You can turn this way and this way. Neck. We can move like this. Isn't it? Wrist. Wrist is this part of the hand. Wrist. What can you do? We can move it this way. This way it will not go. We can move it front and back. So complete that table which is given there. Move each part and see and write down the movement and the characteristics how you can move. So which portion, which are the parts which we can move in the one direction? Yes, the palm, isn't it? The elbow, we can move in one direction. Hmm? Now, which can be moved in both directions? Yes, the head we can move in both directions, isn't it? Which are the parts which we can move in many directions? Can you tell me which are the parts? Yes. That is the hand. Ah, this whole hand if you take, you can rotate it round. So that means this way, this way, isn't it? This way, many directions we can rotate. So here we saw that there are some arrangements inside the bones which helps it to move. Isn't it? Or do different activities which helps us to move, which helps us to walk and run and catch and hold. Isn't it? So these uh, arrangements which help us to 
do different activities they are called as joints so what does joint joints connect the bones together and help us in various movements and actions so inside the body there are not only bones the bones are joined together okay they are joined together those are those arrangements are called as joints so each bone is joined in a particular way that it helps us to move and do different activities so those arrangements are called as joints i hope it is very clear for you now there are three types of joints in our body which are the three types of there are more joints you have to learn only three types first one is the ball and socket joint what is a ball and socket joint we when we hear itself we know ball isn't it so there is a bone like a ball and a socket that is socket is what if you take a switch and put into this this is called as this holes is called as a socket okay what do we do we take the um plug uh, the uh, plug and push it into this into the switch board isn't it into the same way there is a bone which looks like a ball and it goes into the shock socket okay so one bone will be curved like this and the other bone will be like a ball which fits into like this so that you can turn it right round that is called as a ball and socket joint please look into this picture where are these ball and socket joints there in our body one is in the shoulder this one the hand this long bone has a round it's a round in shape like a ball and inside the arm there is a curved bone so this bone will fit into this bone look into the picture okay so it is freely movable what is the characteristic of this ball ball and socket joint it is freely movable the ball of one bone rotates in the socket of the other bone so here this shoulder chest bone is there the chest bone has got a socket the ball of this elbow will fit into the socket of this chest bone and you can freely move it round so it is called as a ball and socket joint okay we have two ball and socket joints one in the shoulder the shoulder joint is ball and socket joint and in the hip in a leg a leg also we can move right round isn't it our legs we can move so in the hip bone also we have a ball and socket joint and in the shoulder also we have a ball and socket joint okay now next one is the hinge joint have you heard the word hinge yes where have you heard the word hinge ah, on the door isn't it on the door when you want to connect the door to the wall in between go to your home room and see how the door is connected to the frame of the door there are steel things in between that is called as a hinge okay so there is a joint in our body which which um, looks like a hinge so how is it two bone look at this picture two bones will be there another bone bone is joined in between like this so that you can turn it like this look at the picture that is called as a hinge hinge means in that that this hinge picture please see which is used in the door you can see one is interlocking in another like this so that you can move it up and down okay now this hinge joint is there in your elbow here here we have two bones here we have one bone so in these two bones this one bone is get connected into that so that we can move it like this so in the elbow here we have a hinge joint and in the knee of the leg there also we have two joints and the thigh bone so the thigh bone is fixed inside the lower leg bone there are two bones there down so that is fixed there that is called as a hinge joint so hinge joint can be moved only in one direction like this we cannot fold it down you can go up and straight like this only in one direction okay yes next is a pivot joint pivot joint where is the pivot joint pivot joint is in our neck the part where the skull and the anterior part of the vertebral column we know here the vertebral column starts here and we have the skull here so here this part where the vertebral column is joining the skull here it is fixed inside the skull so that you can turn it like this so you can turn like this the bone turns to 
opposite direction that is called as a pivot joint. So where is the pivot joint? In the neck where the vertebral column joins push it is pushed inside the um, uh, part of the anterior part of the vertebral column is uh, fixed with the skull that is called as the pivot joint. So it turns to two sides. This pivot joint we can pivot joint the type thing we can see in our daily life. Okay where is it? The cap of the powder tin have you seen powder tin you can turn it like this and this isn't it the powder tin we can turn up and down that is an example of a pivot joint okay it turns like a powder tin so three types of joints so what is a joint joints are bo are connects bones together for it to help it to uh, move and do different actions and which are the different joints that we learn the ball and socket joint, the hinge joint and the pivot joint. Now down we have uh, certain things. A model of a uh, hinge joint. That is, um, uh, you can see in the picture the model has somewhat like a hinge joint. That is the door of the hinge of the door is like a hinge joint. Next one, you can make a model of a uh, ball and socket joint. How can you make it? That is an ice cream ball. You can take, cut it and push another ball into it. You can make it like a um, ball and socket joint. Then pivot joint. We know the lid of the powder tin, the lotions, all that is pivot joint. So try to construct the model. It is not compulsory. You do it and keep it with you to find out the different types of, to understand the different type of joints. Thank you children.